How's it going everybody? In this video, we are gonna be installing a domain controller service on our Windows Server 2022 VM. In the last video, we got that Windows Server 2022 VM set up alongside a Windows 11 machine that we can use as a client or workstation. And we set them up in template mode or so that we can clone them and create as many virtual machines as we'd like. And we had a little cool fun uh, live improv tap dancing so that we can install that Windows 11 without a TPM inside of a virtual machine and without encrypting the drive so that we can actually clone clone it. So if you haven't checked out that video, you want to get caught up on where we are today, you can go do that. But I'm going to go jump in uh, and we will go ahead and hop over inside of our virtual machine, hypervisor, whatever that virtualization software name is when you're using VMware Workstation, which is what I'll be using for this. Let's go ahead and create a new folder and we'll call these uh, servers. How about that? Let's go ahead and put that inside of our base uh, XYZ domain is really where we want to put it. And let's go ahead and clone our server 2022 machine and go ahead and create our XYZ domain controller. I will be calling this domain XYZ um, just for the sake of our understanding. Um, and I think I actually have it set up already, which actually isn't a bad thing because that's how we created it to begin with in that previous video. We can call it DC1. How about that? So maybe we'll be able to later create multiple domain controllers and maybe do some crazy like replication shenanigans. I don't know. We'll see where we go, but I'll drag that into servers and we can start this thing up. Now, you might have noticed in the last video, we didn't actually install VMware tools on our server, but we did on our workstation. With that said, we're just using a command line inside of the domain controller. And I don't know if it's going to be a pain or an easy thing to be able to use VMware tools to just copy and paste in and out of this virtual machine. It'd be nice to do that so we could use commands that we find online, but it also just might be nice to have like remote access to it. Uh, we could install SSH, like the secure shell to be able to connect to the machine, or we could try and open up uh, like PowerShell remoting. I think that would be worthwhile, but we kind of want to you know, actually set that up. And I haven't done that before. So we're going to do a little bit more live learning or just explore and experiment. That's what this video series is all about. So let's hop back into it. Let me try to see if I can install VMware tools. I mean, I guess it's kind of going to be weird, but with that, we can send control delete, log in with our password. And let's see if we actually see a different drive available for us. I think we can see that with like net, what is it? Uh, net computer? No. <laughs> I thought it was, there was some net something that might allow you to see, oh, net use maybe, to see drives. No connections. No, nah, let's just check out if we have a D drive. We do. Okay, and this has our setup 64 in it. So let's try and just run, I'll use a dot slash to run setup 64. And let's see if we could actually fire up our installer. Looks like we can. So that might be nice and handy for us if we do end up doing anything. Did it even run? Did it? Oh, it's in the back. It's just hiding. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and install this and be super quick on that. With that said, it's nice to have this, but I would still kind of like to do some of that remote management stuff with uh, our actual, you know, PowerShell remoting. So let's go ahead and Google Windows Server Enable PS Remoting. Is that something we can do? Apparently, enable PS remoting configures the computer to receive remote commands, only available on the Windows platform, and that will allow us to do what we want to do. Oh, it's enabled by default on Windows Server. Okay, enter PS session, or new PS session is how we want to do it from the client. Enable it as needed. Configure it to receive remote commands and allow the remote access on clients. So let's create a client, how about that? But I guess we can reboot this thing. And let's take a workstation and go ahead and clone that for a management device, how about that? Management client. I should have probably called that like XYZ, but whatever. <laughs> Give it the preface. And that doesn't need to be in a folder or anything yet. We could use it as a workstations folder if we really wanted to, but um, who cares? <laughs> Let's just explore XYZ, the domain controller is back up. We have not yet installed the domain controller. So maybe we aren't even gonna be doing that in this video. Maybe we're just gonna be messing with stuff. Uh, control delete. 
So just as an example, let me fire up like notepad applications. I think I notepad, okay. Hello, can I copy paste this string? So I'm going to highlight it all, copy, um, and then let's see if I can just paste that in here, and I can. So that's very nice. Looks like the VMware Tools is helping us out in that regard, and we could probably just copy in and out as well. So, sweet, okay. Nice and easy, we just needed to know to navigate into that drive and fire up the setup. Now, could I go ahead and actually enable PS Remoting? It should already be set on this server. Speaking of, can I zoom in on this? I can, thank goodness. I was gonna make sure you guys could actually see here. Will this let me do it? Okay, no output and no response whatsoever. Let's go to our client and let's see if we can get into PowerShell. Do we have Windows Terminal? I think it's now installed by default, yeah? Benefit of Windows 11. Can I do a new PS session? How do I do it? How do I run it? Etc. Why is it so slow? <laughs> Let's keep reading. Example allows how to allow remote access from public networks on client versions of the Windows operating system. Well, computer name, local host. Well, we can go figure out what that actual host is. Can we not? Ooh, yeah, it tried to connect to localhost by default, which is an issue. Let's go see what the IP address of our server is. And we're currently 192.168.111.139. Okay. So can I do new PS session and I think computer name here? Yeah, I realize my face is in the way. Ooh, we need to add it to a trusted setup. When a room client cannot process the request. Hmm, if the authentication scheme is different from Kerberos or if the client computer is not joined to a domain, the HTTPS transport, ooh, so we need to go ahead and install it with a domain. Kind of annoying, but that's a-okay. You can use the winrm.cmd to configure the trusted hosts. So let's open up Windows Terminal as administrator, run as administrator or shift enter as you wanna open it. And with that, we could try to figure out how we could add this domain controller to our trusted hosts, uh, which will allow us to connect to it remotely. Um, add Windows Server to trusted hosts. And we'll ask Uncle Google. Uh, here we go. Whew. Okay, we can use WS for something and PowerShell will allow us to do that with its own PowerShell providers. By default, the trusted item exists, but the value is empty. Can I run that? Let's go back to our client, slap that in. Ooh, WinRM service is not started currently. Do you want to continue? Yeah, let's do it. Mm. It doesn't exist for me. Can I list there? Yeah. I already told you to start the service. It must have failed earlier. Yeah. Okay, so we see that localhost. I, can I list items like LS in there? Yeah, yeah. Client cannot connect to the destination specified in the request. To verify the service is running. All right, let's start service WinRM. Is that all that it takes? Seemingly. There we go. Okay, so we need to be able to connect to client and trusted hosts. So client is a thing and trusted host is a thing. It just needs actual values. So we can add an item and add literally anything. That's kind of wild. Can I add a specific IP address? Yeah. Let's do that. We can set item and set a value with an IP address. I'm going to assume. So set item, client, trusted host, and set the value 192.168.111.139. Yes, I understand that it trusts, modifies it, and it might not be authenticated. 
client might send credential information to these computers, that's totally fine. This will eventually be on a domain, but I still wanna be able to do it. So enable, uh, uh, sorry, when we connect, we want new PS session on the computer name, 192.168.1139. And then I think we would need to pass in credentials, but we can then get credential from a GUI application, correct? So let's try administrator. And then this is the administrator for our domain machine, for our domain controller server. So if I enter that password, it opens it. Okay, cool. Now I need to, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to run that. I want to enter PS session and can I just run help? No. Does it just take the ID? Oh, it does, it does, it does. Okay, so I'm in the documents folder in the, and I'm on that host. Nice. Okay, so we didn't even have to configure like SSH or anything. We are now on the domain controller from our management machine. And that's kind of nice. Okay. So let's set up uh, an Active Directory, right? Let's do it. Let's Google, because again, that's all we're doing here. Windows Server Core 2022 install Active Directory. Can you tell me how? Here's some good list. We're learning together, everybody. So IP config all will tell us everything that we're set. And I am on that host now. Um, we know our IP address is 139, but our host name's pretty wild. We should probably try and change our host name. Can we do that? Yeah. Let's change our host name. We can do that with sconfig, as it mentioned, and it will allow me to do that in a remote connection, uh, seemingly. Doing weird stuff with the prompt. I don't know if it'll let me do that through the PS session. Because <laughs> it tries to set up a like flashy interface or whatever. I'd say, okay, we can do that on the DC itself. So let's change the computer name to XYZ DC one. Yeah. Change the computer name, restart now. Let's do it. You know what? Um, we probably didn't need to include the domain in front of it because when we reference it by domain, it'll already say X, Y, Z. So we can change that super quick. Logging in here. Let's expand that terminal so you can see it. And let's run sconfig one last time. It should see our name has been modified, correct? Okay, so let's change the option to just DC1. How about that? Restart. Let's go back to the guide and keep reading. Um, we will want to modify the network settings. We will only have one network adapter set, but if we can set a static IP address, that would be best. Uh, yeah, we might be able to change it to like a 155 or something for the last octet, just so we know. Uh, and then the domain controller's DNS server will have to be itself, will it not? They end up changing it, a static IP address, normal names, default gateway set, which dot two is should match our own environment but yeah that they just said itself the new ip address that it creates for the dns server and then 15 and exit let's do that super quick oh type out my password okay so our current host name is DC1, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and run sconfig so that we can modify our IP address. Actually, but before I do that, I'm super sorry. I just wanted to validate that we are using a dot two as our default gateway, which we are, so that's perfect. Let's go back to sconfig. Now we can change the network settings with number eight. 
They're correct. So the only index available is our virtualized network adapter. Let's change this to static with an S. Static IP can be 192.168.111. I'll use 155. And 255.255.255.0 for the default is totally fine. But our default gateway we know was two. So that should be perfect. And theoretically we are good. Let's go back to the network settings. Now we are a 155. We've probably totally lost our connection from the client. And now we should go ahead and modify our trusted hosts. Yeah. So let's enter PS session. Now that we know that that's the command we can use, 155. And let's use the credential, get credential one more time. Let's ask it by the GUI. 192.168.111. No, sorry. We're entering the password at this point. And fingers crossed. Okay, we are connected. Now we are on the server, on the domain controller that we can go ahead and set up. Uh, let's change the DNS server, which we know we can use with two. Uh, new DNS server is our self, because the domain controller should remain the DNS server, 192.168.111.155. Uh, do we set an alternate DNS server? I mean, that could be like Google, could it not? I guess you don't need to. Let's not. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, and let's get back to it. Now, once you get into PowerShell, it looks like get Windows feature is all that we need. And they're trying to find a Windows feature that has the name beginning with AD for, act, I'm assuming, Active Directory, right? And they want to install the Windows feature Active Directory domain services and include the management tools. I think that would be good to do in case we need to. And that is all it takes. So AD domain services include management tools. Yeah. Install Windows feature, AD domain, I've already forgot it, services. <laughs> install management tools. Granted, we could do this on our clients uh, because we can remote in just fine. Um, oh, did I get that wrong? Include management tools. Goodness gracious. Uh, I am running this now just on the DC1 itself, but it could very well be done on the management client because now that we've got that set up with remote uh, stuff. Um, using a workstation, by the way, to do that uh, is good and that we can get the command line and console access, but uh, it's kind of been to be a pain because we're not able to use some of those other graphical user interface stuff. So maybe we could do a, a Windows server install uh, just to manage a remote server from another server. We can play with that as needed, but I think we're good for the moment. Looks like that has already been set up and installed. Uh, actually, what I would like to do, and call me crazy, I, I kind of want to be able to take notes on this sort of thing. Like, you guys are going to hate me, but I would encourage you to build out your own like repository to actually take notes of this installation process and code that you might write and things that you might do. Um, so let me completely derail this video yet again um, and then actually go ahead and make a repository where we can keep track of some of this stuff. Is that okay? You guys don't mind? Uh, let's do it in our management client, actually. Let's git. We don't have git. So... Let's go ahead and actually go grab some tools that we might be able to use. Uh, we can do this with Chocolatey. If you aren't familiar with Chocolatey, Chocolatey is like a basically a package manager for Windows. And I don't know if I've showcased it in other videos before, but it's essentially like being able to use apt or apt-get or pip uh, in the Python sense or RPM or whatever, yum. Uh, so let's totally ignore Microsoft Edge um, and let's go get Chocolatey. Okay, so Chocolatey software right here is all the link that we need, chocolatey.org. 
and that will allow us to just rapidly pull stuff in as we need. I'm gonna go ahead and actually click the get started and this tells us, hey, you know what, you can install this from the cheesy, hey, <laughs> set execution bypass policy and then IEX invoke expression to download some weird thing from the internet. Uh, traditionally, we make fun of this because it looks like malware. You know, it, it, it's not always encouraged, um, but it gets the job done. So I'm going to go ahead and slap that in. And that will go ahead and install Chocolatey. But again, we are just blindly trusting. And this is the predicament if you don't go look at what the heck is this thing actually doing. Uh, I'll go actually to that web page, um, chocolateyinstall.ps1, if I could grab it. Thank you. Okay, cool. And now I'll go there. It, you you still didn't let me pull it properly. Get out of here, solitaire. What are you doing? Why are you in my video? There we go. Now you can see the actual PowerShell source code that this thing would run. And if you wanted to scroll through this to actually understand what it was allowing on your computer to execute, that is a better thing to do. Um, we will need to uh, restart PowerShell to be able to actually do this thing. So what I'm going to do is open up another Windows terminal in administrator mode. But then we can now run the command Choco or Chocobo if you're a Final Fantasy fan. And there we go. We can just install whatever we want, really, if they have repositories for it. And Git is exactly what we were looking for. By installing, you accept two licenses for the packages. It's like totally cool, sweet. I'm assuming you're all good with it because you ran the command. Obviously, you want to be running with administrator privileges in the terminal to be able to do that, but that will go ahead and set stuff up for us. Do you want to run the script? Yeah, man. Uh, doing all this, I don't, I'm not quite positive because it's not going to be setting up SSH, but we already have SSH as a client. So where does Windows put its SSH uh, keys, because I want to be able to get pull and get clone and do all the stuff that we tend to do, right? So, yeah. Now we have git uh, after I reset the variables and path. Oh, yeah. You can close your shell to see the changes or just type refresh environment. So, if I try this, hopefully we can now run git. Still no. Okay. Let's go back and forth, opening and closing some of these. Oh, I actually opened up CMD. I didn't want to do that. I want to go back to terminal because it's much nicer. And I can run git. There we go. Now, if I wanted to git pull stuff, uh, well, I guess you could use a public repository. Could you not? Yeah, let's make a public repository. I want to log in though, and I'll do that on my host. Let's go to github.com, John Hammond, and just take my notes here. Uh, can I go to repositories and create a new one? Let's do it. Let's call this active directory. And you should do the very same, seriously. Um, notes and resources for the active directory, YouTube, YouTube, not YouTube. it's YouTuber, YouTube series on HTTPS, YouTube.com. John Hammond, zero one zero. <laughs> um, yeah. If we make it public, or should we make it private? Uh, let's just do it. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's copy this. And now let's go back to our management machine. I'm assuming we can just go ahead and get clone this fella. Totally cool with it. Nope, I need a public key. Super lame. Um where get windows hello ssh keys oh you have to enable us well we already have ssh do we not it's installed by default on new windows is right so let's ssh key gen will that properly put in the same place dot ssh idrsa yeah yeah um, so now let me pause the video while I add this to my uh, project uh, SSH keys. I will go ahead and cut out the private key and then add it to my settings on Git. That's the gist.
everybody. So stand by. Okay, paste that in here. Let's do, I guess you really didn't need to be put away for that. Um, Windows XYZ, uh, XYZ domain management client. Yeah, and you need my password. So let's do some last pass. Ta-da. Okay, theoretically that's good. Now I could try and get clone, correct? Yeah, all right. So we have Active Directory and can I use Chocolatey to install Sublime Text? You guys know I like Sublime Text. It's totally my bad. Oh, sweet, it's good. Nope, doesn't know where it is. Uh, hyphen Sublime Text? <laughs> nope. You could probably search in all reality. Um, maybe VS Code is something we could use. Subble. I'm going to get something random if I just use Subble, though. Yeah. If I install code, well, let me do it. I don't know if that just pulls in Visual Studio Code. VS Code. All right, this is enough torture. Oh, sweet, it got it. <laughs> yeah, do everything, please. This is a nicety of chocolatey, um, but again, he's just trusting and, and you know, allowing that. Only good for us to do in our home lab, presumably. <laughs> okay, VS Code has now theoretically been installed. I want to refresh my environment. I don't think it will just let me fire up code. Does it need a different command? Uh, we might just need to restart. Maybe this is only happening because I'm in Windows Terminal. I haven't tested it on like, hey, pure PowerShell or CMD. I doubt that would make any difference, but VS Code? Code. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet. So what we can do is move into this Active Directory machine and now code a readme.md. And let's say, do, 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 do. Can I make this a little bit bigger, please? Oh, what? What is happening? I just want to, I just want to extend the, expand the font size. You guys, so I am not a Visual Studio Code person. <laughs> and maybe that's why it's, it's still like a tiny font. <laughs> Active Directory setup. What did we do in the last video? We should make uh, like a videos for, in my case, you can obviously put whatever you want. So zero, zero, install VMs. Subble zero zero install VMs read oh I don't have <laughs> I don't have to set an alias for Subble and Visual Studio Code oh goodness so install VMs we did um, installed Windows Server 2022 as a virtual machine VMware workstation correct is that fair Two, we installed Windows 11 as a virtual machine and workstation. You guys don't care about this, uh, so let's actually get to um, 0, 01 um, install DC. And we should probably change that uh, install VMs to like a setup VMs. I think that's fair enough. So now, Zero 01 install domain controller. That's what we want to use our code for. Excuse me. So we know from this previously, we were using these installation tools. We used scconfig to Yeah, use SC config to change the host name, change the IP address to static, and change the uh, DNS setting 
DNS server to our own IP address. Good enough. And then we did install Windows feature. Ooh. AD domain services. <laughs> include management tools get that right this time perfect perfect and with that we can probably push this for the moment um, and I need to tell it who I am oh I probably should have actually put you know my real info rather than all that noise. My name can simply be my name. Cool. Git commit. Nice. Initial commit. Up to date on videos thus far. Git push. Cool. Uh, let's go check out and see can I go to github.com slash John Hammond slash active directory, please? I can, and now that is good. All from our management VM. Very nice. So we were still doing things. We were still installing active directory on our domain controller, which was being weird for a second. Um, after we installed those domain features, we need to actually go ahead and install I'm, I'm grabbing this here so you can see it. After we've got the feature added, we can go ahead and now import this module for PowerShell, for Active Directory domain services deployment and install a forest. Yeah? Let's do that, super easy. Slap that in, PowerShell, install ADDS forest is what it said? Yeah, just right after it. Forest. And the domain name that it needs, I'm going to assume, is going to be what we want our domain to be. So I want xyz.com. You can use whatever you would like. Um, that's just what I'll be using for the sake of this video series. So let's use xyz.com, if I could type. And the safe mode administrator password we will set, just for the sake of our lab, to the very, very same as our... Uh, domain admin uh, account or local admin domain controller one. Target server will be configured as domain controller and restarted when this operation is complete. Do you want to do this? Yes. Very, very cool. That's all that we really need to do for the sake of PowerShell with Windows Server Core. And while we could very well have ran some of the things that we did previously, like SC config, we could have done that here on the VM itself, but we weren't able to do that through our management client with our PowerShell remote session. We can do that in later moves, or we can actually use different syntax to like, hey, actually change uh, uh, to static IP address. And you could just grab the commands that allow you to do that. In fact, we could literally go grab the commands to do that. Looks like get net IP address will allow us to find something, get that, but we could actually just go ahead and change any of these as well as uh, the DNS server. So if you want to copy and paste those and slap those into your notes for your GitHub repository, again, I very much encourage, you could do the exact same. Let's try and do that super duper quick. Uh, is our domain controller still cruising? He is, he's installing his stuff. Can we get our remote session? You know what, I can control R, honestly, and enter PS session. There we go. <laughs> oh, I forgot to hit tab. Cool, 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 cool. Fly us in, please. Hopefully I got the credentials correct. Maybe it's busy right now. <laughs> Kind of installing, you know, the Active Directory domain control services. I wonder if it's like now getting into like regular Active Directory authentication and not wanting to take that oddball one. Because if we just passed in xyz.com, like as the domain, 
I don't know what it's going to try and connect with or how. Maybe we just borked it. Whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. Going back to our domain controller. I can see you're about to be signed out. We're going to get her started because ADDS was installed or removed. Goodbye me. Please go ahead and do it. However you say reboot. Rec oh. <laughs> Alrighty, my man. You know what we forgot? And I'm kicking myself for this. We forgot to take a snapshot for the very fresh install. Or like once we clone the VM, uh, what, what VMware doesn't tell you is that if you clone something, you don't have a set v, a snapshot from it being cloned. So now we'll just have this domain set up and that'll be our earliest actual snapshot. Whatever. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit a video and post and tell, warn people. <laughs> Anyway, it takes a little bit of time on the supply and computer settings after getting this stuff set up. Uh, trust it. Leave it be. A-OK. -okay. Um, will it allow me to actually do that remote connection or did it not? It, it totally didn't, but I'm going to wait for our domain to settle. Okay, fair warning. This takes a long time. I've been sitting for a couple minutes here. We can go back and read um, what else is next. But once we get a prompt to log in, it'll ask us, hey, uh, go ahead and log in to your domain. And, oh, okay, they reset their domain server to localhost, which is interesting. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it sets it to a loop address during the installation and we have to change it back? Interesting. And now they're talking about different ways to install, I'm assuming. Because at that point, it's done. It is done at that point. Yeah. Like, that's all that you needed for that install. So let's go see. Cool. Look at our XYZ administrator prompt. So we have our domain, XYZ. Same password. Logged in A-OK. -okay. I dig it. Let's go ahead and actually change the, uh, let's let's figure out how we can change that from the command line rather than using SC config. Because if we want to get our net IP address, that is how we could find the interface that is using, and can I full screen this? Is it not already full screened? Yeah, okay, cool. Let's get the interface for the one that's working. And then it tells us this interface index is four. Now we might've saw on those past pages that we were just looking at, you can go ahead and change the DNS settings on uh, a specific interface. So set DNS client server address, server address I'm gonna assume is what it's gonna end up being set to. Can I get that value? Get DNS client server address. It probably needs to know what it might be. Yeah, so for this one, interface index four, as we saw, currently it's set to localhost, just as that explained. So let's set the, given the interface index, the new server address that we want. For uh, IP address, or did that take value? Oh, server addresses. That's all we needed, okay. 192.168.111.155 is what we decided on. And that makes its change. And now when we get or retrieve that value, it is currently as we had set it. Perfect. With that, it is now installed and set up. And we have our XYZ domain at a bare minimum created. So let's take a snapshot because I don't want to lose this state, correct? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we're, we're not forgetting anything. Uh, once he turns himself off, however long that takes, apparently, let's go ahead and snapshot, take snapshot, fresh XYZ domain. 
setup 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 perfect now let's go ahead and create a client because we know we can create workstations i suppose workstations is a better word than client so we can clone our friend here that we had set up in the previous video oh i totally named it like clone of whatever that's an awful name uh, we can rename this to WS01 for workstation 01, right? Um, and with that, we probably don't need to have this one be named XYZ DC1. We know it is just WS01. Yeah? So let's fire him up. And our local admin account that we created for the clients, remember again, is using the same fancy pass password, um, but not using the one, two, three exclamation point like a domain controller is. So, we should be A-OK. -okay. Logging in, just fine. Okay, so now we are here, and we need to join a domain, correct? What is our IP address? Let's get into our terminal, uh, and I'll open this up as administrator, because we can. So we probably don't need to set a static IP address for this one, right? But it's currently 111140. Now, if I wanted to join a domain, it looks like it says access work or school is the way to do this. So if you want to add a work or school account, uh, you could actually hit connect, I believe is what it is. And we can join this device to a local Active Directory domain. Okay, so it is asking for a domain name. We know we just called that xyz.local previously. Hmm, xyz? Oh, sorry, it was xyz.com, not .local. Uh, I, I made the mistake there. Um, it looks like it's A-OK -okay finding xyz though. Nope, no it's not. Let's try xyz.com. And that couldn't be found either. Why is that? xyz.com? You're in a local domain. Hello? XYZ. Ooh, you know what? We need to change our own IP. We need to change our own DNS server on this workstation to go connect to the um, actual server. Good catch, everybody. I'm glad you caught that. So we could do the exact same commands that we were just using previously. We can get net address what was it no <laughs> i guess i'm dumb uh it was scrolling back up here get net ip address i follow i follow so this will tell us what we're looking for and we know, okay, this 111140, again with interface index four, that will allow us to get DNS client server address. Yeah? Okay, cool. So it knows that it's currently gonna be looking at 192.168.111.2. So with that, we can set interface index to four, change this to set, and use server addresses, 192.168.1.1.1, sorry, 111.1.1155555. Get network address shenanigans. Now we have the proper DNS, and now we could join a domain just with that access worker school set up here. Is there a command? I'm kind of super curious if that's okay. Uh, again, just, I know you hate me. Join domain PowerShell. Ooh, at, wait, what? How to add computers to a domain using PowerShell? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Add computer domain name at COSO. Restart force. Oh. That's it. Add computer domain name. Credential, okay, you would have to get the credential again uh, and restart force. Okay, let's try it. Go back to our workstation here. 
I was just hopping in and out of VMs like an idiot. Add computer, domain name, AB, uh, xyz.com, credential xyz administrator, attack force, attack restart, hopefully. Did I memorize all that correctly? So we know our password is for the domain administrator back on our domain controller. I don't know. Let's see how we do. Oh. Specified domain does not exist or could not be contacted. Do you need XYZ? Let's try that one. I, I, I would think maybe it's not super happy about the dot com because that's whatever I don't I'm awful at the distinction between the whole net bios names and stuff. So no, that still failed. Why? Am I not doing that the right way? Let's try it from the GUI. Someone in the comments can correct me and tell me that I'm an idiot. I'm sure they will. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that because I'm here to learn just like everyone else. I'm just the idiot in the front sharing his screen. You know what I mean? Join this device to a local domain, XYZ. You should be able to see that now. You should because your DNS server is correct. Please. Domain cannot be found. All right, let's try xyz.com. Did I do something wrong? No. I don't get it. Stand by. You know what the problem is? I didn't turn back on the domain controller like an idiot. Let's, uh, probably can't access to DNS. There's nothing responding to the DNS requests. <laughs> didn't think of that one, did you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, 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 we're having fun. Troubleshooting. Uh, applying computer settings always takes a little bit of time. So let's let that thing go. Uh, and I'll get back to you in a moment. Actually, while that's doing its thing, um, we should probably keep track a little bit. Oh, it's already done. Of um, what cool, fun stuff we've been doing in our notes here. So again, if you really wanted to uh, fire it up, uh, I don't, I don't. Uh, yeah, trust the files. The this is me. I wrote these. So we can walk through uh, all that we needed to do. Um, and changing the IP addresses and domain name settings and stuff, um, DNS settings, etc. So if you haven't done that, that would be worthwhile to do. Uh, but now our DC is back up, so we can get back to our workstation. And let's see if we can use our command line one rather than the GUI here. And let's see if this will pull through for us. I'm going to use domain name xyz.com because that did that is what I set it as. And how about that? If I got the credentials right, I got the administrator spelled properly, forced restart, and it does it. Yay. Okay, cool. So when this machine reboots, we have not we have not yet created a user for this workstation or any users in the domain at all, but we have created and join this workstation to the domain. So while the domain admin could literally go and actually log into it, because that's the only user account that exists right now in the domain, that works great. And it will allow it to access because it's on the domain now. And let me show you this, it's starting back up. Um, it'll prompt for, hey, what XYZ credentials do you want? Um, and what user would you like to log in with? Uh, and that might be nice. So. Will it do that? Yeah, you could use other user and sign in to the XYZ domain. Now, I yet again forgot to uh, actually <laughs> take a snapshot before I messed with that client, but we can do that just now. 
and take a snapshot and say, joined to XYZ domain. Perfect. Uh, our server is all good and A-OK. -okay. Um, in all reality, maybe it's worth creating a base template of this. Uh, like if we were to, we could do horrible, crazy things because I know the IP addresses might get muffed up, uh, but we could try and clone a base join to domain. Uh, maybe we do or don't want to do that. If anything, now we know the command that we can store in our management client and we can say joining the workstation to the domain and we'll use the instructions there as we just saw add computer including the domain name xyz.com credential needed to know the actual administrator that we would be able to enter the password for i realize my face is in the way i'm sorry uh and force and restart and that would do it for us so that's that uh took a little bit of time took a whole lot of uh different directions and a whole lot of tangents and roads that i went down but goodness gracious everybody i hope you had some fun i hope you learned something new i hope you are building out your own active directory lab alongside me and taking notes and writing down the steps that you walk through and building out your own catalog and library and archive of this effort because that is how and what you can refer back to if you ever do this later which you might probably will maybe probably a hundred less than a hundred percent chance or greater <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out everybody i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do like youtube algorithm stuff like comment subscribe you know the drill thanks everybody i'll see you in the next one take care